everybody. Thank you for waiting a few extra minutes. Um, as people are signing on, uh, I'm going to be um, letting people in from the waiting room. So it might I might be a little scatterbrained for the first minute or two. Um, like now I have to let a few more in. <laughs> Awesome, but thank you so much for taking the time to join me this evening. Hopefully you've already had some dinner. Um, so today we're gonna be talking about writing an effective personal statement for the Master of Social Work program. Um, I guess before we get started, can somebody just uh, drop yes in the chat if you can see and hear me and see the slideshow? Okay, perfect. Just got to make sure because uh, I don't have any moderators here and we're a bigger group today. So I just want to make sure everything goes good. So the um, uh, the webinar portion of this is going to take about 20 minutes or so. And then at the end, we'll move into Q&A. So if you have anything, this is your space to pick my brain and get any questions you have about your personal statement or your application as a whole. Okay, so just a quick introduction. My name is Michelle and I'm the founder of MSW Helper. If you follow me on social media or you've seen my emails or you're part of the Facebook group, you've probably seen my face around by now. Um, but I started MSW Helper after I had gone through the experience of applying to my Master of Social Work myself. And I remember it was such a stressful time and like people who aren't in the social work field don't realize how competitive social work programs are. Like there's a lot of different services for things like med schools and dental schools and law schools, um, but there really wasn't anything specific for the social work field. And I remember when I applied to my master of social work, I went to my school's like free writing service for some help with my personal statement. And you know, obviously no complaints because it was a, like a free service, um, but I felt that they just didn't understand like the nuances of the social work profession and that, you know, this was something that it was really needed. So after I got accepted to my master of social work, um, I started helping people with their personal statements. And this was back in like 2018 while I was in grad school um, and continued doing it while I was working as a social worker. Um, and yeah, over the years, MSW Helper has grown and grown to being like a full blown resource hub where we have, you know, we have our free resources and webinars in addition to editing services. Sorry, just letting a few more people in. <laughs> okay, so these are these are the ways that I generally help people um, with their personal statements. So of course, I offer personal statement editing and critiquing. That's kind of like you know my original service. That's really how MSW Helper started. Was me you know, providing editing services. Um, and when I edit personal statements, I'm doing so much more than just grammar edits, right? I'm really making sure that your personal statement is like in line with the social work program and that everything is cohesive and that, you know, you're using theories and talking about ethics and answering all the prompts in a really thorough way that's aligned with the social work field. I also developed the MSW Writing Workshop, um, which was developed because for a long time, people were asking me for help with the writing process. And for a long time, I always said, no, I can't, like I can only edit after you wrote it because I was really nervous about, you know, being too close to the process when it comes to you writing your personal statement. I never wanna be in a situation where you know, someone might say that, you know, there was plagiarism or unethical, you know, whatever in, in the um, personal statement writing process. So what I've done is I've recorded like a series of videos and worksheets. And the goal is to get you to write your personal statement or at least your rough draft in two hours. And I feel like with me being removed from the process, like that's the best way I was able to do it while still giving you like the information that you're looking for and to really help you get your personal statement done. Um, so as you can see on this slide that I have up here, I do have a bunch of markings in red. So today as a thank you for showing up, um, I am giving 10 people $30 off my full package. Um, so yeah, if you use code FP30, you'll save $30. 
So that'll bring the price from $189 to $159, which if you look at the price of personal statement editing and the workshop on its own, um, you know, that's the best deal that I definitely have. <laughs> um, and the, the full package includes the writing workshop. So after this, you'll basically be able to get your personal statement written. Then you'll send your personal statement to me for editing and critiquing. Um, you'll also get my grad school CV template, as well as access to virtual office hours. So that's something that I offer weekly only to people who enroll in the full package. And basically how it works is the same way office hours work at school, right? You can come in to the Zoom call, ask me questions, pick my brain, and you have unlimited access to that once you enroll. So you can come week to week. Sometimes people have like, you know, really more macro questions about their personal statement and other times they have like okay i just have a really quick thing that i that i want to ask um so yeah the full package is definitely the best option if you are like you know you want to put the best application out there possible um yeah and like i said there's 10 coupons available um and i'm sure that a few of them will go over the course of this hour together and this replay is going to get sent out to everybody who signed up as well Okay, so this is what's on the agenda for today. We're gonna to be talking about what schools of social work are looking for, some traps to avoid, next steps, and then, like I said, we'll move into questions. Okay, so this uh, personal statement is the most important part of your MSW application. Schools of social work are looking for your ability to think critically and your potential contribution to the field of social work. This is more important than your skills and experience, and you can use your personal statement to show admissions committees that you have the skills that they're looking for. So even though programs are competitive, you can still get accepted to MSW programs, even if you don't have amazing grades or a ton of experience. And honestly, I'm a perfect example of that. I applied to my Master of Social Work right out of my BSW. So I had no experience in the field. Um, and so even though schools said that they wanted like two years of experience or whatever, I applied anyways. And I ended up getting accepted to MSW programs. Um, and it's because I knew that what I lacked in experience, I made up for with potential and showing the admissions committees my critical thinking skills. And I was able to do that by really focusing on my personal statement and showing them that I had all the skills that they were looking for, despite my lack of experience. And this goes the other way too, you know, over the years I've worked with so many people who have a ton of experience, but because they struggle with the personal statement and like talking about their skills and all the things that they've learned, they end up getting rejected from programs because they aren't able to show the admissions committees what they learned in the field. Okay, and just a few other stories that I wanted to share because I know so many people hold themselves back because of their grades or experience. Um, but yeah, over the years, I have seen so many different situations. Um, and so this, this is Walker's example. So he did the full package with me and he came from a non-social work background. So in particular, he came from the banking industry. I believe he was doing um, like financial advice in a bank. And, you know, at first glance, you would think that working in banking is not at all related to social work. But, you know, one of the first kind of things I asked him was, okay, so you obviously were working with clients. You also were working with clients in one of the most important areas in their life or one of the most stressful, right? Money is huge. And that's a huge source of stress. And um, yeah, for like for, for anybody. And, you know, like even thinking about like, you know, how did he meet his clients where they were at? I'm sure that that financial advice that he was taught in training, yeah, it might have applied to the single young man in his 20s who has a great job and no financial obligations. But how did you have to tailor that advice to the single mom with four kids who's working multiple jobs? So, you know, that's a social work skill, right? Learning how to meet your clients where they're at and like navigating the ethics there. Um, I had another client who was a reporter in her home country. So she um, 
she was able to really articulate the fact that she was sick of reporting on social justice issues. So she wanted to become a social worker so that instead of you know, just reporting and seeing them, she could actually be an agent of change and work towards solving those social justice issues. So if you're applying to your Master of Social Work and you are coming from a different field, I encourage you to start thinking about some of the soft skills that you have that you bring from your last career or area of study um, or why your last career isn't working for you. Maybe you were in something else. What did you realize and what are you going to do differently by becoming a social worker? Okay, and then, you know, I know low grades is another source of stress for people. And the one thing I always say is that social work applications are holistic because they actually care about you as a person, right? Um, and this is just an example from Claire here as well. She worked with me and despite having a low GPA, she got accepted to all four MSW programs that she applied to. And she was able to do that because she used her personal statement as a tool to show admissions committees that she had everything that they were looking for despite her grades. Um, and you know, like, like I was saying about, like they are looking at you as a person. So many people apply to their master of social work and they might have had like a year where their grades were lower, but maybe there was a reason for that, right? Like maybe they went through something really hard and yeah, that experience is going to lower their grades, but that experience is also going to contribute to them being a better social worker down the road, right? Who's better able to empathize with clients who maybe has been through some similar things as their future clients. So that's why, yeah, it's so important to, if you are applying with lower grades, you want to put that extra effort into your personal statement and show the admissions committees who you are as a person that goes so much deeper than your GPA. Okay, so when it comes to the personal statement, most schools are going to be asking about a combination between your personal experiences, so like your professional schooling, all that kind of stuff, um, and then a discussion of a social problem and how social workers can work towards solving it. In addition, they are assessing your personal statement for things like your ability to communicate, evidence of critical and analytical thinking, potential contribution to practice in an area of interest, and a complement between social work and your own goals and interests. So for the rest of this webinar, this is what we're going to be focusing on, is how you can demonstrate all of those things with your personal statement. Okay, so like I mentioned, most schools are asking about your experience, a social problem and your goals as a social worker. So I've kind of put together two sample statements here and I want you to tell me, or I want you to think about which one is going to be stronger. So the person in personal statement A, they worked in a women's shelter. Their social justice problem is gonna have something to do with child welfare. And their goal is to pursue a master of social work so that they can get a job at the hospital. Personal statement B, they also work in a women's shelter. Their social justice problem is going to be discussing an issue that they saw at the women's shelter. And their goal is to pursue an MSW so that they can address that issue in a different capacity. So maybe at the macro level. So just based on the information that we have here, who do you think is going to have the stronger personal statement? Let me know in the, ch in the chat. Oh yeah, seeing lots of bees. I think every single week I have only seen bees in the chat, which is great. Um, I completely agree with you. <clears throat> I think that personal statement B is going to be a much stronger personal statement compared to personal statement A. And the reason I think that is because she's cohesive, right? She's talking about, you know, her experiences and starting with her own insights from working in the women's shelter. And she's talking about a social justice problem that, you know, she's like showing the need for like an area that is related to her experience and goals, showing the admissions committee that like they need to accept her so that she can be the person to resolve that social justice issue. 
Now with personal statement A, they're kind of all over the place, right? Like the reader is going to be confused about what this person's goal is and why they are wanting to pursue a master's in social work. And I would go so far as to say that this person comes off a little bit self-serving because they're saying they want to get an MSW so that they can get a job at the hospital, right? Whereas the person in personal statement B is focused on how her MSW is going to allow her to support her clients in a different way. Okay, so, oh, and the other thing I wanted to say about this is we know that personal statement B is stronger, but who is the stronger applicant? Well, in my opinion, we actually don't know. I feel strongly that, you know, you guys are not taught how to write a personal statement like this. So this doesn't always come naturally to people to write something that looks like personal statement B. They basically give you the prompts and say, good luck, right? So that really is my goal is I'm trying to teach you like this. And I'm trying to bring you from personal statement A to personal statement B. So when I get, you know, a personal statement that looks more like A, I'm not thinking, oh, this person is, you know, not going to be a good fit for the program. I'm thinking, how can I draw it out of them and get them closer to personal statement B and really coach them and teach them like, this is what admissions committees are going to be looking for. So that's what I was saying. Like, I, you know, I'm not just doing grammar edits. I'm really trying to like pull out your strengths and like take what you've written and really try to tease it out a little bit further and help you take it a lot deeper. Okay, so then the next piece is talk is evidence of critical and analytical thinking in your personal statement. So I've put together some questions that I encourage you to ask yourself as you're working towards your applications. So the first thing is to understand what social work actually is. You'd be surprised how many people apply to their Master of Social Work with a very limited view of what social work actually entails. Um, and it, I mean, it's not too much of a surprise because I feel like in the media and like mainstream, we always see a very limited view of what social work is, right? We see the child welfare worker or the therapist, really like those micro level roles. But social work is actually so much more than that. And one mistake that I often see people make is saying they want to become a social worker because they want to help people. Well, in my opinion, that's a very vague statement because it doesn't tell the reader anything about like who you want to help, how and why, or even like why you want to help people as a social worker. Like if you want to help people, why not become like a doctor or a lawyer or like a firefighter uh, or a teacher or a psychologist. <laughs> um, all of those professions help people in different capacities. So when you're thinking through your, like why you want to be a social worker, I encourage you to think about like, what do social workers do differently from other helping professions? And that's going to help you like answer that question in a more thorough way that's aligned with social work. The second thing is knowing your why. So how can you contribute to the field of social work in a meaningful way? And I think the best way that you can do this is really starting with your insights. So kind of like in that example that we just saw with the applicant who is speaking about a social justice issue based off of something that she noticed in the field. Um, you know, you, if so you might have like experience working or in the field that you can draw from to really inform your social justice issues and goals. This might also come from your like personal experiences, right? A lot of us pursue social work because of personal things that we've been through. So how can you take that experience, connect it to the bigger picture and like talk about it as a social justice issue that extends beyond just you and your experience and then tie that together by talking about like what you hope to do as a social worker down the road for people who have also gone through that thing. Okay, number three is to connect theory to practice. So this is something that's more of an expectation if you have a BSW and you're applying for the advanced standing. If you don't have a BSW and you're applying for the regular stream BSW, there's not going to be the same expectation that you're able to do this because you don't have an education in social works yet. So like, you, you know, you're not going to be able to speak as eloquently on it. 
Um, but something that can really stand out in the personal statement is to integrate theory into your personal statement. Um, and so I'm not saying that it necessarily needs to be something where you say like, you know, systems theory is, and then like defining the theory, it's more so applying it and weaving it into like the framework of your answers and really using it to like inform like what you're talking about. Um, and then finally, use research to back up your points. This is just another thing that you can do to really show your critical thinking and analytical skills, as well as your ability to apply evidence-based practice as a social worker. So when you're answering questions about like a social justice issue or something like that, you know, take it beyond just like general statements and look up the research and like prove the point and like show the admissions committee that yes, this is something that is real that needs to be addressed. And here's the evidence to back that up. Okay, and then uh, ability to communicate clearly. So admissions committees read literally hundreds of personal statements every single application season. So it's really important to make sure that your personal statement is skimmable. If we know that admissions committees are reading a ton of personal statements every single application season, we want to make it as easy as possible for them to quickly go through and find all of our answers um, and get the gist of our of our personal statement. So some things that I recommend doing that um, that will really help with this is using headings. So if there's like four or five different prompts, I would break up all of those prompts and turn them into headings that like match the prompts. Um, that's going to make it a lot easier for the reader to see that you have answered all the questions versus having it like in one big um, pair, like one big essay. Um, I would also recommend using a strong introduction and conclusion. This is really important because, and this is something that I that I teach in the writing workshop, which you you would have access to if if you sign up for the full package. But creating a really strong thesis statement that you can use at the beginning and the end of your personal statement, and the idea is that you are going to tell the reader everything about your background, your um, area of interest, and your goals as a social worker in one to two sentences. My goal when I work with people is to make sure that the first and last sentence tells the reader everything that they need to know about you. And then the rest of your personal statement is just proving that point. But if you can catch them in that first couple sentences, the person's going to go, oh, okay, like I understand exactly what this person's goal is in their history and how they're going to contribute to the field in a meaningful way. Okay, something else I recommend is sticking to the word count and page limits. Um, you know, if you are going above or below, that's kind of an indicator that you have either written too much and you're not being concise enough, or you haven't given enough detail to like express what, what's needed to be said. Um, I am kind of a stickler for like sticking to the word count exactly. Like if they say the max is 500 words, your answer ideally should be 500 words. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to reject you if you are a few words over, but I am saying that schools, you know, they give very few instructions, right? So just doing everything that you can to follow all the instructions to a T, it, it's just going to give you that extra edge and um, yeah, it's, it's just best practice to do it that way. Um, finally, treat your personal statement like an academic writing sample. Yes, you might be talking about personal things and your own experience, but it also is a sample of your academic writing. And if you can show them that you have like the academic writing skills needed to be in the program, that's going to really stand out. Um, so I usually recommend formatting your personal statement in APA. So things like, you know, having an APA style title page and a reference list and like double spacing and all the things that you would typically do in an APA style paper, um, I would do in your personal statement as well. Now, of course, if the school is like instructing you to format it a different way, or sometimes they'll have you like copy and paste it into a form, um, that's not going to apply, right? You should always listen to the instructions from the school first and then any other advice should come second to that. 
Okay, so that brings us to the end of the webinar portion. Um, you know, it's short and sweet, but I'm hoping that this little bit of information has a, made you feel a little less worried about your application, especially if you have concerns about your grades or anything else. And knowing that the personal statement is such an important tool for like you advocating for yourself and showing admissions committees that you have what it takes. Like really, you can't change your grades. You you can't change your grades. You can't get more experience without more time. You can't really control what your references say about you. But your personal statement is the one thing where you, that you have that where you can control the story and really like show admissions committees that you have what it takes. Um, yeah, and I hope it gave you a little bit of direction as well. And um, and I know I've been getting a lot of messages that people are feeling stuck. So hopefully you kind of have some next steps there. Um, so I did throw up this slide again for those who are interested. Um, so again, there are 10 of these coupons available. Well, actually, I'm not sure how many are available now. I'll have to check. But um, yeah, if you use code FP30 on the full package, you'll get $30 off of that. And you'll get instant access to everything that's listed there. Hopefully, you can see it well enough. Um, but yeah, let's move into Q&A. So if you have any questions, the best way to do this is, um, since we are a bigger group, um, if you could ask questions in the chat and make sure you ask them to everybody, not just me, um, just so that everybody has context as to like what's being asked. Um, and yeah, I'll go through one by one and answer any questions that you have. I would also say because we're a bigger group, let's try to do um, like questions that would apply to a lot of people. If you have something that's like super specific um, to your situation, um, it might be best to like uh, email me or if you end up doing the full package, you can come to office hours and we can like talk a little bit further. Okay. Uh, do you have any tips for structuring personal statements that are broken up into several separate mini essays with very tight word limits, especially with a prompt regarding how one's background relates to social work? Is it better to feature more experiences with less detail or just a couple experiences in greater detail? So yeah, it's so tough sometimes with the word counts, right? Because sometimes it's like so structured and, and it just doesn't leave a lot of room for like creativity and like just, yeah, they can be really, it's, so it's really tricky sometimes to make it cohesive and like get everything that you need to say. So in my, in my opinion, um, I think it's better to talk about the one or two experiences and take those deeper rather than try to fit every single thing that you've ever done into, into your like experience portion in your personal statement. You want to really focus on like digging deep, right? And like, they're going to have all of your experiences in your resume. Like most schools will ask for like a CV or something like that. So you definitely don't have to like list every single thing. Um, and yeah, it's more so about, I would say like, yeah, taking it a little bit deeper with, and like only talking about one or two experiences. No problem. Anybody else have any questions? We still have quite a bit of time. So I'm, I mean, I'm here, so. <laughs> Okay, I see a few more came in here. Um, I'm answering the question of what can a social worker do to help with the social issue of interest to you? Is the expectation that we describe exactly what a social worker can or keep it generic and rounded, like raise awareness, et cetera? Um, how I like to answer that question is to talk about what you are going to do as a social worker, right? So like talking about like, um, okay, this is a social justice issue. And as a social worker, I hope to do X, Y, and Z. Um, so like, for, like, for example, um, you know, uh, I had a, like, one story I hear a lot is, 
you know, someone going through the personal experience of not like having mental health challenges that were made worse because they're of like cultural reasons, right? They're members of their culture didn't understand or validate their experiences with mental health. And then talking about that as a social justice issue. And then, you know, sh like talking about how like, this is a like an issue that is across that person's culture. And then as a social worker, that person is going to provide like culturally sensitive mental health care and supports to fellow members of, of her community to like raise awareness and like educate her community on mental health. So um, yeah, I think I, I prefer to answer that question in terms of like what you are going to do instead of like keeping it super generic. Um, okay, one question that keeps popping up on some of my applications is, um, okay, we have a rigorous program that requires a lot of time and dedication. How do you plan on managing your res responsibilities? Um, not sure how to go about answering this question. I feel like I might be overthinking it. Yeah, for sure. So in my, what I think schools are looking for are for you to show that you have thought about those things, right? Obviously attending grad school is a huge commitment, both in like your time as well as financially. So just being able to show that like you have a plan to like, like manage it all. And like, maybe you're going to have to like quit your job or pursue um, like loans to help pay for it. Um, and in my opinion, you know, if we're ranking like importance of questions, this one would probably be like ranked a little lower in terms of importance. So usually like, I think a couple lines will answer the question, like then they'll see like, okay, yep, you, you have met like everything that we're looking for. Um, but yeah, you definitely don't need to like go into like super detail. It's just showing that you have a plan and that you're likely to be successful. Um, one thing I always say is like, if you're applying to a master's program, you have gone through the experience of managing the demands of class in your undergrad. So um, that's always like a nice way to answer that question too, is to say like, you know, I, I did it before and this is my plan to do it again. Um, okay, for my resume and CV, is it better to add every single work experience I have, even if they're less related? Yeah, for sure. So the grad school CV typically can be longer than what you would submit for work and, you know, like for jobs, which when you get into like jobs, you definitely don't need to include everything you've ever done. But for like grad schools in general, yeah, you definitely want to add everything that you can. Um, also, don't discount your non-relevant experience because you actually learn like a lot of soft skills that can be applied to social work. Like I could talk about how my job at McDonald's as a teenager prepared me to become a social worker, right? Because we like, you know, you get really good at like thinking on your feet, dealing with difficult customers, um, uh, like teamwork, communication, all those things that transfer over every single, um, every industry. So yeah, definitely list them all and try to pull out some like social work skills or soft skills instead of like focusing on like the actual details. Like in my resume, I probably would leave out the fact that I was responsible for handling cash and delivering food and like whatever, like that's not really the interesting part. The interesting part is like the skills that I learned. Okay, my laptop is going to die because I forgot to pack it. All right. Well, thank you for coming along. I'm so glad it was helpful. Um, okay. I work with unhoused people living with addictions. Uh, there are so many social justice issues. I don't know where to start coming up with a social justice issue. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, yeah, I guess at the end of the day, I would say maybe pick one that is maybe related to your goal and like really try to think about like, like, why are you pursuing a master of social work, right? Did you have an experience that, you know, you want to talk about? And then like, is that related to your reason or your why for pursuing a master's degree? And like, how will pursuing a master's degree allow you to help the unhoused population in a different way? Um, yeah, and I, I don't, yeah, I, I guess what I like, that's not a bad problem to have because the other problem that people have is they can't think of any like social justice issues based off their experience. 
Um, so I guess just go with the one that you feel passionate about and is related to your goals, because it's just going to make it so much easier for you to, um, to write a strong personal statement. If you're like passionate about what you're talking about. Yeah. Marsha's having the same, so much to say, I'm having trouble narrowing that down. Um, I, I don't know if you have gotten a copy of my personal statement template, um, it's a tool that's available on my website. It's free to download. Um, that might be a good place to, a good tool to use just to help you like list things out and like see if you can make any connections um, and decide ultimately which one you want to go with. Um, yeah, that that might be like your best bet if you're feeling like, oh, I, I don't even know where to start with this. Uh, so is it advised to use research to support discussion on the social justice issue? If using theory, should we always reference? So yeah, the, um, the research is going to come in to the part where you're talking about the social justice issue, um, basically to back up your points, right? I had this insight, here's the research to show that this is an issue, and this is my goal as a social worker. Um, yeah, and ideally, if you're talking about theory, it makes sense to reference it, right? If you're talking about it directly, where you're saying like social just social, um, or like conflict theory is well, like whatever. Um, but if you're applying it and just like using it as like the framework of your answer, then you probably don't need to cite it because you're just like applying a theory versus explaining a theory. Uh, do we need to include APA in the citations or any research we use? Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah, you definitely want to do like the, you know, their la the last name and then the year in brackets and do like a proper APA citation um, and then a reference page as well. Sometimes, uh, like I was saying, sometimes they only allow you to submit it as a form. So in that case, you obviously can't do like a reference page because like you aren't submitting it as a word document. So in that case, I would just um, either just include the citation with no reference because like the school hasn't given you the opportunity to do so, or you might be able to add it to the end of the form, like the references. Um, it's going to depend on like what, what you're able to do. Okay. Um, if two out of four of experiences have a recurring theme, is that enough? Or do each experiences, each of your experiences need to relate? Uh, do you mean like two out of four experiences that you are going to talk about in your personal statement? Okay. Um, no, they don't necessarily all need to relate. I guess the one thing I would say is that talking about four experiences in your personal statement, especially with a limited word count, might be hard to do thoroughly enough to like talk about all four. Um, I mean, obviously it's going to depend on like your word count, but um, yeah, I mean, if, if they kind of have like a, but that said, like if they have a recurring theme and you feel it's important to discuss all of them, um, but don't feel like you have to, like I was saying, don't feel like you have to include everything in your personal statement. You might choose to pick one or two examples from your work that you want to talk about and um, just leave the rest in your CV. But I mean, there's no like no hard rule either, right? It's so much easier when I can actually look at your personal statement holistically and then say like, okay, based off of what I read, I would maybe change it to this or that. So um, yeah, I, I guess it just depends on like what you ultimately end up writing. No problem. I'm gonna have a drink of, a drink of water. <laughs> while I wait for some more questions to come in. Anything else? Looks like the questions are tapering out, but I don't want to end it if people are typing. So, <laughs> I 
Okay. Do you suggest, uh, how do you suggest going about a question that asks you to discuss your weaknesses? That's a good one. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> um, so when it comes to answering questions about weaknesses, um, they are looking for you to demonstrate your critical thinking skills, specifically like your critical self-reflection skills as a social worker. So one mistake I see a lot of people make is either not answering the question or they'll do like a humble brag and say like, um, oh, I'm, I'm a perfectionist or I work too hard or think, you know, things that are like really a strength. Um, that's not what they're looking for in the personal statement. What they are looking for are for you to talk about like real things that you are struggling with that you are going to have to be mindful of as a social worker. And like, they're not going to penalize you for that, right? Like they, they, they want you to know, like they know that we are not perfect people and that by acknowledging our weaknesses, we can work towards being better. So like one example that you could talk about is maybe like boundary setting or like, um, like managing your levels of empathy, right? You know, where you're taking your work home with you, or it's like impacting your client work because you're just so sad about their situation. Like that's all stuff that like, as social workers, we need to work on overcoming. Um, it could be things like self-care, right? And like, like working to the point of burnout. Um, you might even want to discuss like positionality, right? How does your position and in society impact your clients? So I might talk about like, you know, as a white woman, how does that impact my diverse clients, especially in a system that was developed for and by white women, right? So um, yeah, I would say like, pick some, like talk about something real that's going to impact your career as a social worker to show your critical thinking skills. Um, what are some tips that you have when schools ask why you want to apply to their specific MSW program? So I would talk about um, like, I mean, it's going to depend on the school, right? Um, there's a, because there's a lot of different reasons why people um, apply to different programs. But yeah, I would think about like, how do your goals align with what the school offers? So maybe there's like a stream that is related to your goal. So like, I don't know, like addictions, for example, maybe they have like, you're interested in working in the addictions field and they have a specialization in addictions. Maybe there's a professor who has really awesome research in the area of addictions. And so you, you know, you want to get into their space and like, you know, work with them in some capacity. Um, not that at the master's level that we work with them directly or anything, but <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, you could talk about like alignment. Sometimes people talk about like, um, location right like maybe you want to go to school in the same community that you're currently working as a social worker um because it just makes sense for like placement opportunities and like connections and stuff like that um so I, yeah i think it's really just showing like why the school aligns with you and i would also talk about like why you're a good fit for the school too right always frame it in that way i always see answers where people say like I want to go to your school because it's the top program. And it's like, okay, yeah, you and a hundred other people have said that, but what other people can't talk about is how like your experience in addictions is like something valuable and unique that you're going to bring to the program and that you're going to have a unique voice to offer that's going to improve the cohort as a whole, right? So yeah, I would definitely talk about like alignment with the school and also as much as possible, talk about how you are a good fit for the program. Um, can you mention professors names and their work at the school? Yep, yeah, I see people do that all the time. They will look up like professors and like talk about like their research that they're doing and say like, you know, this is super aligned with what I want to do. Um, how specific should we get when talking about the types of populations we want to work with and our career goals? Um, as specific as makes sense for you, right? Like, um, yeah, like I, I guess like the more specific you can get, the more it's going to stand out, right? Like if you have like a really unique area that or like population or just something that's like super niche, um, 
that's going to stand out versus like, you know, all the people who picked like mental health as a whole, you know, it, yeah, it's it's just when they're reading personal statements. So there's really no rule about like how specific you should get, because it's going to depend on like your goals. Um, but yeah, like there, you definitely can't be too specific. Thanks for the webinar. You're welcome. I hope it helped. <laughs> okay, we're kind of tapering off here. So um, if you want, you uh, you could probably raise your hand if, if you would rather raise your hand than type questions out. All right, looks like we might be done if you're typing. I'm sorry, I'll wait for you, but <laughs> um, yeah, why don't we wrap it up here just in case everybody's done. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, and if you have any questions about the full package or anything else like about my services, feel free to send me an email um, or contact me on social media, whatever works for you. Um, Oh, I see Stephanie has a question. Um, if you get the whole package, are you able to get assistance from more than one paper? So the full package includes one round of personal statement editing for one school. And if you want additional personal statement editing, it's um, an extra $100. So you get like a coupon um, uh, for like a discounted rate. So then if you want like additional, but you can also use the office hours to ask questions about other applications if you want as well. Um, so yeah, um, is the full package time limited? Nope, you have uh, pretty much uh, unlimited access to it. Um, the discount codes, there's only 10 available, but they're not 10 um time limited it's just like until they're gone um but yeah once you have access to once you enroll in the full package you have unlimited access to everything there um you know i once was once advised don't always say unlimited because i might not be in business forever so i can't promise that but <laughs> yeah as, like for the near future like you'll have access to everything there awesome And I'm just going to stop share just because I can't actually see anything while I'm in presenting mode. <laughs> All right. I think we're probably safe to say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody who came out today. I, I'm hoping that you're feeling a little bit more confident about your personal statement. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Have a good night, everyone.